Welcome again to everybody. Uh, very happy to have you. Um, as I said, this is uh, the second edition of the Avzia Showcase, uh, this time with Jinko Solar. Very happy to welcome Titus. Um, before I give the word to Titus, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with Titus, but for those of you who are not, a little word of introduction. Uh, Titus is a very familiar face of the solar industry in, in East Africa, but also in, in the wider region. Um, he's been working in solar now for almost 10 years um, and worked with some of the, uh, the most familiar names of the industry, African Solar Design, Solar Gen Technologies, uh, Kenya Power as well. And for the last two years, Titus has been uh, in charge of uh, technical service at Jinko Solar, um, focusing mostly on, uh, on technical support, but also business development, uh, really helping uh, his customers to, to really fully understand the different uh, technical options that are available for projects. Um, so very happy to have you with us uh, today, Titus, um, because I know that you will be telling us not only about uh, the solar modules, which everybody is very familiar with uh, when it comes to Jinko, but also to, uh, to an entire line of uh, new products, including the, the storage solutions, which I'm sure many people connected with us today are, are very keen to, to hear about. Um, so without making us wait longer, I will stop sharing my screen and Titus, I invite you to, to share yours. Um, and yeah, please, the word is yours and uh, welcome again, everybody. Uh, thank you so much, John, and also to your entire FCA team for the kind and uh, introduction and also for organizing this uh, particular event. I know this is quite different uh, from the normal webinars that we've been uh, having them, as, uh, as you mentioned. And uh, so um, today specifically, I'm going to uh, give some few highlights of what we are offering currently and also uh, regarding our new portfolio um, when it comes to uh, solar PV modules and also energy storage, which is a new product also in our portfolio. And uh, we'll have some insights and also at the end of the session, I expect that um, we will uh, have a session also for key on them. And uh, now to just have everyone on board so that we'll be on the same page. I know Jinko is not a new company, especially in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. We've uh, had presence in almost uh, all the countries in Africa. And currently is that, uh, just to mention is that we are initially a model manufacturer, uh, rather leading model manufacturer, leading globally for the past uh, four years. And uh, we've delivered globally uh, close to 70 gigawatts of PV modules. This includes all the modules that are being installed with Jinko labels. And also the global market share is uh, now at uh, close to 13%. And also um, our capacity in terms of module capacity is uh, now 30 gigawatts of uh, PV modules. That is for every year for annual uh, capacity. And now for this capacity, we're getting this from 11 global factories. Uh, that, is, um, that is in three different countries. And uh, the factories do sell and also uh, module manufacturing. And also, as I said, is that we have presence in uh, over 100 countries uh, all over the world and um, in all the continents. And uh, briefly, also, is that if you've been uh, very keen in the past few years, is that um, we've been launching new modules and also new technologies. And um, the reason for this, particularly, is a huge investment in uh, research and development. Annually, we spend close to 200 million USD uh, for research and development. And also we have a team of more than 900 members uh, who are working on the, on the product development uh, each and every year. And uh, I think notably is that um, for the past few years is that uh, we've managed to uh, uh, we've managed to really meet a number of uh, records or rather uh, have a number of records in terms of um, essentially efficiency. Like uh, looking lately, the most recent one is the end-type monomodule efficiency of 23.01 and also uh, uh, the monocell efficiency of 24.9 that we um, actually got it last year. So uh, with this is that we managed to come up with very innovative modules and also solutions uh, for the solar industry. Uh, and um, now to just uh, give you an insight on um, what we also do is that, uh, as I said, our primary purpose is um, uh, offering PV modules, uh, solar PV modules. And uh, the PV modules that we do offer currently is that uh, we split them into two main categories is that we have modules for utility scale and also we have modules for distributed generation. 
And uh, just to give you an insight is that the reason why we split this two into two categories is that we want to categorize our modules uh, for ease of choice, uh, for to give the customers ease of choice. And um, for the reduced scale modules that we currently have is that uh, um, these are mainly 72, uh, mainly 72 and 78 cell modules. I hope you understand that on how we uh, up our class development or rather how we get to achieve high power for PV modules. There are two main ways. Either you can increase the wafer size, uh, the wafer size or rather the cell size, or also you can increase the number of cells. For, for the chill scale products is that uh, mainly these are 72 and 78 cell modules. And also we do also categorize them as either monofacial and uh, bifacial. And uh, the reason why is that monofacial ideally we have generation only on the front side of the PV module. Whereas for the bifacial, we have generation on both sides of the PV modules. And um, also is that uh, for the utility product, we have three different categories based on the cell size. We have the Tiger Pro modules based on 182 millimeters of the size. We have 163 millimeters and also 166 millimeters. And the power class range ranges between, uh, uh, for, for this particular year, it ranges between 450 to 545 um, watt peak. That is for the utility product. For the DG product in this case, on the other hand is that um, they are mainly for residential and um, uh, C and I solutions. Is that um, we have them as, uh, of course, uh, slightly lower power class that is in the order of 400 watt peak. And um, the reason is that uh, we have fewer cells, that is either between 54 cells, 60 cells, and also uh, 66 cells. And uh, what we're going to discuss about today is uh, ideally the DG product that we just recently launched, that is the Tiger Pro 1H2, uh, that has uh, 54, uh, uh, 54 cells, with, uh, and also a power class output of 405 watt peak uh, for this year 2021. But the maximum power class is 415, as we are going to look in the next few slides. So um, uh, regarding now our uh, discussion today is now on the IFPT DG module that we are looking at. And there is a, there is the Tiger, uh, Tiger Pro 54 cell module that is mainly, as I said, for DG market that is residential, uh, either uh, residential or CNI. And uh, we're going to discuss why, the reasons why we are talking about that. And um, yeah, so before we get to uh, that layer module is that we just briefly get to understand on the, what is the market trend uh, with regards to the DG market overall that is globally, not only in Africa. So um, this is support from uh, IHS that um, that is market studies done in 2020, just trying to analyze on how the DG market looks like in the next few years. And uh, in this case is that uh, the DG market was categorized into different categories. That is either off grid, we do also have residential, we have small commercial, a small commercial, medium commercial, and also large commercial. And um, if you can see is that, um, if you can see is that um, for, for this particular year, for, for 2020, uh, is that we had, um, uh, the, the market was quite uh, smaller compared to 2019, which is understandable because of um, COVID-19. But if you see on the trend between 2021 to 2024, you see that it is an upward trend and the market size is uh, ideally going to increase. and. Uh, we are going to have at least um, an annual growth ratio of uh, between um, 9.8, uh, around 9.81%, that is uh, year to year, that is from 2020 to 2024. So that means that uh, the market is really growing and um, we deserve to have some very good uh, uh, solutions for this panda market. So, and uh, now also, uh, as I said that the market is growing, is that, um, that said also for the DG market, we have two main categories, either residential or uh, commercial, and uh, what are the demands, what, they, what are the customers looking at? And um, in this case, from our analysis is that, um, from our analysis is that um, the customers are looking into several parameters, which we've categorized into uh, four different categories. We give, uh, of course, first of all, we looked at the module side. We also have the, the system design, also the service and the o and From the module side, we're looking into uh, some factors like uh, power and efficiency, which is now this very important factor to consider uh, with the change of the PV module. There's also some uh, instances of appearance when we're looking into aesthetics. Uh, that is why for some customers, for their rooftop installations, as you can see from this particular screen, is that aesthetics really plays a, a, a very important role. And also the size of the PV module, uh, because you need to consider on how to fit in uh, the PV module on the rooftop. And um, the other case is the system design. When you 
get into the system design, we're looking into now the compatibility because uh, uh, the PV modules are not only the only component in the, the solar PV system, there are also other components like the mounting structures, we have the inverters, we have the, the balance of systems. And um, whatever we are having in terms of uh, this particular modules is that we trying to come up with a solution that is compatible with other components, other downstream components, like the case of inverters and the other cases. There are also other cases like uh, the case of weight. Of course, um, we need to have the system to be, or rather the module to be compatible and uh, rather not to be overweight on the rooftop because there are structural implications on that. And uh, the other cases would be on the service and also the on them. We look at the work product warranties and also the reliability of, um, of uh, the PD modules and the solution at large. So um, as I said, is that uh, those are basically the demands from the market. And uh, in our response as a modern manufacturer is that what we are coming up is uh, Tiger Pro 54, um, 54 cell module. This is uh, a quite unique module in, uh, in the sense that um, we achieve high power with a very small module that is less than two meters. You can see the dimension is 1.7 meters on the height. Uh, on the height and uh, the width is 1.1 meters and also you can see the efficiency is actually more than 21 percent and uh, so you can see uh, generally is that um, these are these main uh, parameters of uh, this particular model and also you look at uh, the temperature coefficient which determines on the temperature performance of the PV model is minus 0 0.35 which uh, in comparison with other modules in the industry uh, this is quite um, uh, this performs better at high temperatures, at high temperatures uh, uh, compared to other PV modules in the industry. So these are the main specification just in a glance on the, uh, just in a glance. But for more specification, you can always get these specifications on the on the data sheets. But um, in the next few slides, we're going to look into a number of scenarios so that we get to see on the why Tiger Pro 54 cell module, why and uh, why we find it very efficient for the market. And to start off is um, looking into the design uh, or rather what we had in mind while uh, designing this module. One other side is that we wanted this to be used in basically uh, the DG market that is mostly um, uh, rooftop installations, either residential or um, uh, CNI. So where size really matters. In this case, we had um, uh, in mind where we have the height, the overall height of the module is 1.7 meters and uh, also the width is 1.4 meters. So what this tells you is that it's easy to handle. If you look into this particular picture, is that the length of an um, average uh, average height of a man is, um, or rather human being is around 1.5 meters, uh, that is in the stretch. So that means that for 1.1 meters, it means that you can easily handle this. And also if you look at the weight, the weight is only 22 uh, kgs. So that means that also uh, lifting the um, the module up to the roof is uh, also much easier compared to um, other uh, high power modules. And um, generally if we compare, because um, we are not saying that we are the first one to come up with this kind of uh, residential solutions or other DG solutions. And uh, we get to compare now these panda modules with also other existing modules in the industry. We have, um, like in this case, we have the Tiger Pro 54 cell module that is up to 415 watt peak. We also have other modules based on 166 millimeters wafer, uh, that is 60 cell. And also we have others uh, based on 210, uh, uh, 210 up to 405, and also um, also other 160, other 66 cell modules that we also have in the industry. And uh, if you compare generally, is that uh, if you compare generally in terms of the design, is that um, we are also looking into other factors that uh, one looks into the aesthetics. What we're looking into in this case, like uh, if you see in this case. Um, for this particular installation, uh, where we are being a residential rooftop installation, you can see how uh, uh, the, the the whole uh, installation looks like in terms of aesthetics. It looks very nice because this is an all black module. So what we are saying is that for this particular module, we are having the option of having the module being all black. Of course, at slightly premium cost, but if you are very concerned about the aesthetics, then that means this is the best choice for you yourself. And um, the other key thing also for the aesthetics is that um, we also are having less reflection in that we are using multibus bar or rather thinner ribbons. Uh, so for the thinner multibus bar ribbons, so they reflect uh, less light. So that means that um, you can easily have a view of uh, the solar modules 
without so much reflections as compared to um, if you were using uh, the flat ribbons uh, in some as in some other cases of uh, as in some other modules. So also what is um, very interesting for this particular product and um, and I know this is the most exciting part is the warranties and that um, for this particular module the warranty given is 15 years product warranty. Uh, We've now seen this uh, in most uh, P-type modules. Most P-type modules give product warranties of uh, 10 or 12 years at most. Uh, but for this particular module, what we are giving is 15 years product warranty. And the product warranty will cover any defects in the PV module uh, below materials, either the glass, the uh, junction boxes, and all the other components. So that is on the product warranties. And uh, the power warranty also is still exciting in that uh, the power guarantee is uh, for the first year, uh, the assured degradation is that it won't be more than 2%. And for the subsequent years from year two to, uh, to year 25, is not more than 0.55%. So this is uh, something that is uh, uh, very exciting because if you look into uh, for the EG project is that mostly um, uh, when you're working, let's say for PPA projects, you might work for, or maybe least one projects you're working on your calculation, let's say 10 or 15 years, but you are getting 15 years warranty. So that means that um, it's way, way better because you have even uh, recoup your return on the, or rather you've, um, uh, you've uh, managed your payback period if you're working, let's say, five or six years or seven years payback period. So, and um, again, is that um, if you look into uh, technically in terms of uh, the structural design, it's that it's um, ideally very robust. We are working now on the, having better mechanical loading in terms of uh, either snow or the wind loading. And uh, the improvement that we have been is mostly on the frame, uh, the frame design. And um, something to also note is that uh, for the past few years, we've uh, tried to really optimize our frames by having thinner frames. That is uh, frames of 30 millimeters or 35 millimeters. For this particular module, we are working with 30 millimeters. Then uh, you might be asking yourself why we're we not working with 40 millimeters as we used to work with before. So the difference is that um, we've added in strengtheners on the, the inner walls of this particular frame on the, the frame of the PV module to be able to strengthen the profile and make it more robust and uh, and also therefore better mechanical loading compared to the previous modules that we have and also what most of our computers also are having in the industry as well. So um, with the inner strengthening of the walls of the frame, that means that the mode is more robust and even has better mechanical loading with just the normal fork clamping or um, uh, normal fork, clamp, uh, fork clamping method or even not, uh, using bolts and uh, nuts. And um, if you look also on the, um, uh, the application of the PV modules, as I said, we have been to uh, either residential or uh, CN roofs. When it comes to residential, you understand that um, also C and I is that weight is a major factor that we need to uh, really consider so that we make sure that we uh, we don't um, have so much weight on the roof that might have structural implications. And uh, also for the C and I roof, you might find that um, for most of the APCs and also the installers, you find that um, the roof might might be uh, might be complex sometimes where you have chimneys or any other uh, installations on the roof, and you need to maneuver around to um, uh, place your PV modules. So with the smaller size modules, with the smaller size module, you can still maneuver around and uh, be able to have your installation uh, without any problem and achieve your desired kilowatt peak. As you can see from these particular pictures that I've shared from some of the installations. Also, um, generally is that um, space is also a constraint uh, in some instances, especially if you're working with um, uh, C and I or residential where you need to install maybe a certain kilowatt peak or a megawatt project, and, uh, but now space is a constraint. So uh, with high efficiency and also high power modules, you can see that um, you can actually, uh, you require fewer pieces of modules to achieve a certain kilowatt peak. Like um, I'm not giving this case of an eight kilowatt peak of uh, system. This is a very small uh, residential system. And um, you can see that you only need 20 pieces of the uh, Tiger Profit 4 cell module. 
But if you are looking into the 375 of the 166, you need uh, 23 pieces. And for the 210, um, 405, you need 21 pieces. So the general looking into the space required also on the weight that you need um, a few or more discs. And also you can still expand uh, the size of your system to have for more kilowatt peak. And um, still on the same is that looking also in the, um, if you need to uh, see and analyze on how much can you install on this particular roof. Like for this case, we still have the same comparison of 415 Tiger Pro, you have 210, uh, 405, and also 166, uh, 375, and 166 for 115. Can see that um, this with the 9.6 by 5.6 uh, meters roof is that you can easily fit a 9.96 kilowatt peak of uh, solar system compared to uh, these other cases where you can add limit to this. So um, the installed capacity can be higher with the Tiger Pro 415 watt peak. So um, the other very important case is ideally to look into uh, the transportation fees, especially for C and I in that um, previously for most of the PV modules, we've been having uh, between 280 to 320 kilowatt peak per container. But now for the Tiger Pro 415 watt peak, as I showed you, we really optimized the frame to have 910 uh, modules or other pieces of modules. So that means ideally that um, we can have up to 377 uh, kilowatt peak of uh, kilowatt peak of modules. So if you're working on let's say a mega uh, let's say a mega project, so that means that you need only at least uh, close to uh, close to only three containers, as opposed to uh, other cases where you need uh, maybe four containers. So ideally, you will get to save on logistical costs as well. And also to note is uh, you can also see on how the packaging is done is that uh, this is not just the normal packaging, we've just added in also another end shape support to be able to support the PV modules um, in, the, in the pallet to be able to reduce damages during transportation as well. So uh, logistically, uh, rather in terms of costs, uh, we're looking into the cost comparison of three different modules, that is 375, 400 watt peak and 115 based on different cell sizes. This is 166, this is 210, this is the 182 Tiger Pro. You can see the cost savings, uh, what we are realizing in terms of the inverters, uh, cabling, uh, uh, the mounting UTC. And uh, generally, what is very important is the payback period, is that um, comparing to 166, 375, you can save up to uh, close to nine months in the payback period. Uh, so you can achieve your payback period by, uh, uh, that is nine months earlier compared to these other particular modules. Uh, so this analysis, uh, we base this analysis based on a project that is a small project that is under kilowatt peak project in the, in Spain. So, and um, lastly on this particular session is uh, ideally what is very important also for the PV modules, as I said, we need the PV module to be uh, ideally compatible with the downstream, uh, 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 downstream let's say, distribution inverters in this case. And um, the main challenge nowadays for string inverters is uh, the input current or the, the input current of the PV module, uh, the input current of the inverters because they usually have limitation. Uh, so most of the inverters now are planning on having 30 amperes, uh, 30 amperes uh, input current. So that ideally means that you need uh, 15 amperes by PPT. For the Tiger Pro, um, for the Tiger Pro modules, is that uh, the input current is uh, uh, the the IC is 14.01 amperes. That is for the 115. So that ideally means that it's compatible with this particular uh, with this particular inverters. And uh, we've done this compatibility test with a number of uh, suppliers that we are working with closely, like uh, Sunny Grow. Uh, we have Goodwe, uh, Growat, Solis, and also SMA, and also uh, Huawei, and uh, in some cases. So we've always tried to analyze this to make sure that we are coming up with a vision that is, uh, that is compatible with what is available already in the market or what is coming up in, uh, in the market. So uh, that forms part of uh, the first uh, the first session that I wanted to discuss. That is on the PV modules. Uh, that is the Tiger Pro 54 um, 54 cell module. Now uh, the next session is um, I know it's um, we are going to take some few minutes on uh, energy storage. As I said, uh, energy storage is um, gaining traction, especially for Sub-Saharan Africa. We've seen for the past few years is that uh, the pricing has really gone low, and uh, it's also becoming more uh, affordable uh, in some regions, uh, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa. 
So um, now uh, for the energy storage, it's a solution that we launched in uh, uh, 2019 and uh, we've done developments in 2020 and already supplied a number of projects in Africa and also North America and uh, other parts of uh, the world as well. So um, to give you an highlight on um, what we're really offering in terms of energy storage, we have three different categories. There is uh, one for residential energy storage. We also have um, uh, C and I, uh, C and I, and also for a uh, utility scale. So I'll uh, just give an highlight of the three different categories. For the uh, for the uh, residential energy sol uh, solutions, we've categorized into two different categories. That is one. Uh, that is one uh, single phase and um, uh, single phase energy storage. And number two is that uh, we also have uh, three phase. So for the single phase. These are the different solutions that we offer. That is 3.6 kilowatt for the inverter and 7.2 kilowatt hours to uh, 8 kilowatt and 19.2 kilowatt hours. The smallest unit of uh, the battery is 2.4 kilowatt hours. And uh, what is uh, what is uh, interesting is that uh, all these are hybrid systems. I think that um, they are uh, we're using hybrid inverters, and also now uh, we are having them as solutions, not as units. So with, uh, with the solutions, that means that uh, this will be easy to install um, because these are more of a plug and play. And um, what is also interesting is if you look into the switching time between uh, the off grid and also to the on grid mode, is that we are having the switching time to less than twenty milliseconds. In terms of uh, monitoring as well, we have a separate monitoring platform. Either you can do web or uh, using an app. And um, so this is on the, um, or rather the single phase solution. For the three phase uh, solution, uh, we have 10, 10 kilowatt and 12.5 kilowatt hours or 25 kilowatt hours. It's also still uh, still hybrid and uh, still hybrid that is we have on grid and uh, off grid. And also what is also interesting to note about the solution that is for both the uh, a single phase and also the three phase solutions is that we are offering uh, 6,000 cycles. Uh, so 6,000 cycles working with let's say one cycle per day will mean that the design life of these particular systems will be more than 15 years. The warranties that we are giving, we are giving warranties up to 10 years, up to 10 years, uh, that is for the inverter and the battery as well. And, um, yeah, so uh, these are solutions that we've already supplied to the market and um, we also can and uh, we supply the market. We have all the certifications and uh, and um, yeah, so we really we really have uh, our trust on this. And as I said, the smallest unit is uh, 2.4 kilowatt hours and also we have the cabinet to combine different units. So for this particular unit, we can still have um, uh, up to two units connected in parallel to achieve that, that 8.4 kilowatt hours. That is for um, that is for the residential energy storage. And um, now the other uh, business segment also for storage is ideally um, uh, the C and I sector. That is a point of interest today. And um, for the C and I uh, solutions that we are offering, we are offering between uh, fifty kilowatt hours to one megawatt hours. And as I said, these are complete solutions with the PCS or the hybrid inverter. We also have the battery racks. Uh, battery racks. We have the um, uh, the energy management system, and also uh, for the for the case of AC couple, we also have the inverters. And um, uh, for the C and I, as I said, is that uh, we have two different uh, categories. That is, we can have either AC couple solutions or uh, DC couple solutions. For the AC couple solutions, for the AC couple solutions, uh, these solutions um, you will ideally need um, you ideally need um, uh, a PV inverter to be coupled with the system, and um, uh, and uh, also we are still offering that is uh, up to six uh, up to six thousand cycles and up to uh, ten years of warranty, uh, depending on the, the requirement of uh, the client, and also there is also a separate monitoring system for this particular unit that is for the AC couple systems. And um, also the other option is also the DC couple system. The DC couple system is where you don't need, ideally need um, a PV inverter, where you can, uh, we're using an hybrid inverter in this particular case. So uh, this case is uh, quite, um, depending on the requirement, we can give you either a DC couple system or an AC couple system, but you understand that um, the different requirements because it also depends on the, what you decide. Like uh, for the case of DC couple system, this systems, um, 
uh, are quite uh, slightly cheaper compared to AC couple systems because you don't need uh, uh, you don't need the PV inverters. But if you look at the AC couple, and also they are more efficient compared to the AC couple system. But if you look into the AC couple system, they're less efficient. But um, the other main advantage is that uh, they're easy to expand, that is to scale the solutions or rather to integrate to existing systems. So that means that AC couple solutions would be uh, desirable in that case. So it depends on your requirements, but we have the two Panda options. And um, how it comes is that it comes as a, as a complete solution in that it's a more of a plug and play. So that means that you don't have to spend so much time you know, or rather installation time. So you can easily save on the installation cost. And um, yeah, so now it's still on the CNI solutions is um, for the small units, for the small units, we are ideally using uh, battery cabinets, uh, battery cabinets or uh, rather battery racks. But when it comes to uh, the bigger solutions like uh, uh, kilowatt hours, let's say 300 kilowatt hours plus to mega hours. So we offer this in uh, containerized solutions that are just, um, uh, the, that is the whole unit is uh, contained in the container that includes the battery unit, that is uh, the, the battery storage unit. We have um, uh, the power conversion system, we have the auxiliary system, we also have the scatter system. So we have this in, uh, in, in, in one container, uh, in one container, also the thermal management unit. So we have them in one container. So it's just uh, more of uh, just plug and play uh, solution. And it's also still a modular solution means that you can have different you can have different containers. Let's say you want to achieve let's say uh, three megawatt hours, you can still have different containers. And um, in, in one container, what you essentially have is um, ideally uh, the battery rack, as I said, that is the lithium ion phosphate uh, uh, batteries. We have also the fire separation system, uh, fire separation system in the case, and these are now all automatic, just in case of uh, any fires. We also have the power conversion system, or rather when you will require the inverter, and um, that is the inverter charger. We also have the lighting system. We have the thermal management system, that is the HVAC and also the monitoring system. So this is all contained in one unit. And uh, these units, uh, the units come in the different container sizes in that uh, we can have 10 foot containers, we can have 20 foot, uh, we can have also up to 40 foot, depending on your requirements. So um, now in terms of uh, the, the uh, that is the monitoring of the system is that um, we have a very robust uh, monitoring software to be able to, uh, of course, give you access to your system also remotely and uh, locally. And uh, the battery management system will uh, also assist in uh, giving you, um, of course, you need to monitor and also uh, give you alarms just in case of any faults in the battery. And the monitoring system is up to the cell level in that um, you, we have also the cell monitor in, uh, integrated in this case. And um, with the BMS in the monitoring system is that uh, we have different levels of protection to be able to protect the batteries. You know um, how the chemistry of uh, lithium ion phosphate is actually different from what happens in, uh, what happens in lead acid in that um, you need to uh, give uh, a lot of protection for the lithium ion, uh, lithium ion phosphate solutions in that um, you need to balance the cell voltage. You also need to uh, protect it from uh, overcharging, over discharging, that is also over current and also any battery failures. So with this robust system, this is how the schematic looks like for, that is from the cell level uh, uh, to um, the overall uh, rack level where we have uh, different layers of protection to be able to protect the whole system and uh, uh, that is for the existing time. And um, lastly now is um, ideally how, uh, to give you an overview on how the, mo the monitoring looks like in that um, you can uh, monitor uh, the system or rather your, uh, your installation remotely and also it's also real time in that you can see the generation at any given time of the day and also at any day you can select any month or a particular year and uh, this is very important especially when you want to do uh, maintenance or rather you want to do troubleshooting if there's any fault you want to know on um, where the fault occurred and also when you so uh, this monitoring platform will easily give you um, an idea on where to start with um, uh, with your maintenance 
and also you can see if there are any alarms in this case or rather any warnings you can always give them and be able to uh, perform uh, corrective maintenance at any given time and also you can see also on how much is generated you can set the parameters on the, if you've set in the cost you can see on how much you're saving or how much you're saving if uh, for the case of self-consumption or how much also you're supposed to be earning in terms of income uh, rather generation from uh, uh, from your energy system so um now that's uh, the end of my presentation and um if you have any other questions for the CNDI solutions, just to um, alight to you, for the CNDI solutions, these are custom made solutions in that uh, we give you a position based on uh, your requirement because it's custom made solutions. So we can always advise you that you need this uh, uh, particular kilowatt hour or kilowatt based on your requirements or rather your upload profile. So to get that information, you can always contact us. Uh, this is my email address if you need to reach out to me uh, any given time. Thank you so much, uh, John. Back to you. Thank you, Titus, uh, for this uh, very complete presentation of all the, the different solutions currently available uh, from, from Ginko. Um, very, very interesting developments, and we've received actually quite, uh, quite a few questions. Before I uh, share those first questions with you, uh, Titus, to everybody, yes, of course, we will send you this presentation, um, and of course, uh, Titus will get back in touch if uh, you have submitted a question and we did not get time today to, to address it. Um, all those questions are recorded, so we will be passing them on to Titus and he will be able to follow up. So no, no, no problem on that front. Um, Titus, first, uh, first question. Um, which we got from, from different people, uh, from Jatin, from Sonia. Um, where can we find data sheets and PAN files uh, with regards to storage products? And, and maybe for anybody who is not familiar with PAN files, if you could explain what a PAN file is. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, John. That's a very interesting question. So one is that uh, for the data sheets or the data brochures, either for the modules or uh, for the modules or the storage solutions, mostly the residential, you can always find that from, um, you can always find that from our website. But now for, let's say for the case of CNDI, you can always get in touch with me through, this is my email address. I can always also link you up with the relevant, um, with the relevant uh, sales manager. And uh, for the PAN files, uh, just to give an highlight is that uh, the PAN files are actually files used by PVCs to be able to um, uh, get the parameters of the PV module to be able to, um, of course, perform uh, simulations to analyze on the, the generation performance of the PV module. So this particular PAN files is that we don't usually upload them on our websites because we have different uh, modules and we prefer to give them on, uh, we prefer to share them on a case by case cases. So I can, uh, if you send me an email, I can always share with you uh, what you need in terms of the pan files and also advise you accordingly on how to use them uh, correctly. Very well, thank you very much. Um, we have some more questions focusing on the, um, uh, on, on, on the modules specifically. Um, one question we, we, which is very somehow, I mean, we, we've all been used to uh, um, uh, power output uh, promise of 25 years. Um, I mean, this is almost like uh, nobody thinks about this, but uh, Emily is wondering, how can we actually be sure? Um, like, because this is a very long time. Uh, it's easy to believe this upfront, but how can we actually be sure of uh, this promise made by manufacturers? Yeah, John, um, so if you can uh, give your occasion clearly, um, I believe you're talking about reliability. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so uh, one is that uh, there are two main aspects that when we talk about reliability of the PV model is that um, one is one is on the manufacturer side and the other thing is ideally on the, the customer side when it comes to the installation and also the operation and maintenance. So from our side is that um, we've made strict um, uh, we've made strict adherence into uh, one from the purchase of our build materials or rather or rather BOM or what we use for the construction of the PV modules. So we don't take chances on that in that we only use premium build materials. So we don't need any substandard materials because we are giving 25 years warranty and we still expect that. Number two is that we've done also extensive research and also tests 
with uh, either internally or, or with third party labs like RATC and uh, PBL and also still um, other labs to be able to uh, to test uh, the modules that they can really withstand the very harsh environmental conditions to last for very uh, for very many years. That is now the bill of materials. The other thing is also on the production lines is that uh, during our production is that we make sure that we do extensive testing at every level of the production so that any defects that occur at any Pelea module are investigated and those Pelea modules are not dispatched for sale or rather to any customer if there's any def uh, Pelea defects. And also when it comes also to the transportation is that um, we also ensure that we do clear like we have the flash test reports before the transportation and we ensure that the modules are well packaged uh, before it heads to back to the customer. Now, when it comes to the customer side, the customers now um, make sure that, uh, of course, we give clear guidelines on how to do the installation and also uh, the operation and maintenance to ensure that the modules will be able to last for more than 25, um, more than 25 years. So it's more of a collective responsibility. And the other thing that for our warranties, we are a bank manufacturer. So ideally that we are going to last for more than 25 years. So if there's any warranty case, that means that we will actually be able to sort it out um, and also give you assistance, either replacement or either replacement or a re refund or reimbursement, or whichever works for, for you within the 25 year period. Thank you very much. I think that clarifies uh, this topic. Um, we have another question from Rafael. Um, Rafael was asking specifically about, uh, about the new uh, Tiger Pro modules, when they would be available on the market. I think you, you already addressed this uh, in your presentation, but maybe you, you, can, uh, uh, you can remind us on this. And I would like to, to ask you an, an extension of this question, um, including both the, the, the PV solutions, but also the storage solutions. Um, are they all currently already available? And generally, are they all available at the same time in every single country? Or is there some phasing out or some other reasons we, which could make it that they are not immediately available to everybody at the same time? Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, George. And also to uh, just answer a final question, is that for the Tiger Pro modules, uh, for the 72 cell versions, that is up to 545, both monofacial and bifacial, is that uh, these are already, we've already been supplying this from last year, that is from uh, mid last year, we've been supplying a number of projects. So it's, uh, it's uh, ideally readily available. Now uh, for the 54 cell module, this is a module that we launched last month. So mass production will begin in uh, July, uh, July this year. So you can uh, always, you can make order from Q3, that is from July. And uh, we're doing some pilot um, testing that is from uh, June. And uh, so you can also still get in touch with that. You can see that if you can be part, you can get some pilot orders as well. So what we are doing for the fit for uh, cell module, we are mass production from uh, July this year. But for the other Tiger Pro modules, we have them already in production. Then now to the extension of your question is that um, we have uniform modules that is uh, globally, whatever is offered in Africa is offered in Europe, also Australia and uh, ETC. In some instances, we can have different namings because of the requirements of the country, but it's the same module, uh, what is uh, already offered. So you can please check with us to confirm the exact power class that is available for sale. Thank you very much. We have um, next, we have not one, but two questions uh, from Omar. Um, first question, Omar would like to know a bit more about the certification of your storage products. Um, well, uh, is everything already certified? Which kind of certifications? Um, and then a second question about the monitoring solution uh, that you presented today. Um, can this also work through the GPS uh, communication system as opposed to regular cellular network, I believe, uh, is Omar's question. Yeah, uh, so now I'll um, answer the first part of your question in terms of, uh, or rather the second question that is in terms of the monitoring system. So as I said, for the same solutions is that, um, 
we are working currently, we are using uh, GPRS and uh, GPRS and mostly Ethernet uh, Wi-Fi ETC. But now uh, you'll find that in some other instances, uh, in some uh, remote locations, for the case of microgrids, that might not be available. So um, we also opened because it's a design process. So we can always include a module to be able to accommodate that so that we can use uh, satellite communication as well. Thank you very much. And about the certification uh, of the storage solutions, can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, so for the certifications is that uh, we already have the certifications, both for the batteries, uh, for the batteries and also uh, for the batteries, we have the IC certifications. Uh, and also for the PCS, also we have the certifications as well. And as I said, is that uh, we've already managed to ship to a number of counties. Uh, to give you a case, is that uh, we're already shipping to uh, counties like America, where there's uh, very huge, uh, very strict, uh, they're very strict in terms of certifications. So we have all these certifications in place. In some other cases, like in some other countries, because uh, we cannot really have all the certifications one because if you go to some other countries like the case of uh, some countries like south africa there's some um, uh, requirements that certain uh, uh so, so, so certain uh, pcs or other certain inverters needs to be registered as well and that is for the certifications so we already also have a, uh, a plan for that and uh, for any other county if there's any other requirement for the certification you can always tell us and uh, the other thing is that in our design document or rather in our data collection document that we usually share with our clients to collect information for the purpose of design, we also indicate, uh, we also have a section where you indicate on which certifications you would like the storage solution to come with. So that if it's not already in place, we can always organize with that in the shortest time possible. Thank you very much, Titus. Um, some more questions from a um, little bit similar questions from uh, Kaimu or Kemu, I hope I'm pronouncing right, and from David. Um, they're asking about um, presence or a sales office uh, from Jinko in Tanzania and South Africa. Um, maybe I would like to, to, to expand this question to you. Um, Titus, if you could explain us a little bit more about how you guys are organized. Do you have a presence and an office in every single country? Do you work with partners, distributors? And in the end, what is the best way for people to, to get in touch with you and to, to actually get your products? Uh, thank you so much, John. So uh, to just uh, answer your question is that... Um, for Sub-Saharan Africa, I'll talk about Sub-Saharan Africa, is that um, what we really try to organize ourselves is to split into three parallel regions. That is, we have uh, Eastern Central Africa uh, with an office in Kenya and also sales manager, sales support based in Kenya. And also we also have an office in South Africa with uh, uh, sales managers. We have two sales managers uh, that are covering the South African region, uh, South African region. So, um, uh, we, I will share maybe in the chat. I know they're already, uh, they're also in this particular um, uh, meeting. They can share the email addresses or we can always share with you. You can mm -hmm. contact me, you can link you with the sales manager. And also we have West Africa. West Africa will also have a sales office in, uh, in Nigeria covering the whole of West Africa and some part of also South um, uh, Central Africa. So in terms of uh, presence is that we have presence in all the three regions of, uh, or rather the four categories of uh, regions of Africa, that is East, Central, Southern, and also West Africa. And uh, for this region, partly and also for the Sub-Saharan Africa region, we also have a, a technical support office, we have a logistics office support, and also sales support uh, office as well. That's a very good point. Thanks for this uh, opportunity for making a wonderful transition here. Um, switching on to Patrick's question. Um, Patrick is wondering if you, if you are focused exclusively on selling uh, the panels, the storage solutions, or if you go a little bit further than this in, in providing some uh, um, installation uh, support or even O&M supports. Um, can, can you please elaborate a little bit on this? Yeah, so um, ideally what we're offering currently is um, with our solutions, we are offering free, uh, that is uh, uh, less, um, uh, remote support, that is remote support for our solutions. But also, even in any case, uh, the client would want us to be on site, we can always cost that in our proposal so that we facilitate our our installation team to come to site or rather our commissioning team to be able to come to site. 
So um, it's usually uh, at a small cost so that we do, um, uh, we help in the commission one side. But ideally what we prefer is to do just remote support. Mind you, I told you that we, our solutions are mostly plug and play. So that means that the installation won't take so much time. So what you'd only need is ideally the configuration or rather uh, some few settings and uh, the system would be up and running. Thank you very much. We're uh, little by little getting to, to the end of today's presentation. I'll take uh, two more questions. But again, I remind everybody, if we have not addressed your question now uh, during this live session, um, they will be shared and sent to Titus. So he will be able to, to follow up with you la later on. Um, first of the of the last two questions from uh, uh, from Moritz, can you please tell us again what is the maximum capacity that you can put in a forty foot container? It can have up to one point four eight one point eight four megahertz in one container. Thank you very much. And then last questions from Mohammed. Uh, Mohammed is saying like the, the traditional um, uh, traditional um, module warranty in, in the industry is 10 years. In your case, you explained it's 15 years. Um, can you explain again the reasons why you wanted this to be different? And extension of this question, is this a trend? And might we expect uh, that all modules uh, very soon will also have this 15 years warranty? Yeah, and um, that's, uh, as I said uh, in my presentation, that's, that's a very interesting uh, topic or rather uh, topic of discussion. So for the warranties is that um, you've seen the trend in the past few years is that initially we had five years for uh, warranty for the PV modules, then we want 10 years and uh, now uh, 12 years and also we have uh, 15 years at the moment, like for the case of the Tegia Pro 54 sun modules. So what this ideally means is that um, as I said, Jinko is an industry leader and um, we're trying to give direction to the industry. And um, what means is that uh, the reason why we're giving 15 years product warranty, it means that we have trust or rather we have confidence in the product that we are giving to the customers. So that means that we can give 15 years product warranties. And uh, the reason why we give that is that we've done extensive tests uh, extensive tests to be able to show that I, ideally uh, the bill of materials can be able to withstand very harsh environmental conditions for more than um, uh, for more than the 15 years uh, uh, 15 years that we are giving for the warranties. So it's that uh, we are taking the risk of giving 15 years product warranty because we have the confidence in the PV modules. And um, it would be very exciting to see that in the next couple of years, we see also other manufacturers following up the same trend and giving up to 15 years uh, product warranties so that we get to the risk uh, that is the investors, uh, the EPCs, and also, uh, and also uh, the project owners, they get to the risk also uh, the PV modules from the projects. Thank you very much, Titus. Um, if I may please ask you to stop sharing your screen so I can take over uh, and share a few more slides on my side. Um, we, we've received uh, several additional questions uh, from, uh, from the crowd. So as I said, we will be um, we will be answering and addressing all these questions later on, but very excited to see that uh, many of you were uh, interested and, and, and joining us today to, to learn a bit more uh, about these new products from, uh, from Jinko. Um, I would like to share with you one more slide. There we go. Um, share screen if you liked today's session well uh, actually we we have a lot more uh, that we have been working on and you will be receiving all these um, uh, all this uh, all these slides of course but you see here are all the all the sessions all the webinars that we've been organizing over the past few months and all of them are saved in uh, in our YouTube channel so I warmly invite you to go check out that channel um, subscribe so that you always get the latest uh, videos uh, that we have organized with our partners um, and also before I let you go well um, you know uh, Absia is a member based uh, association and so I would like to to thank our uh, growth 
growing number of members. Many, many uh, leading uh, companies in the industry are are trusting and joining us. Um, So we're very, very thankful for uh, for their support and for them joining us. And hopefully uh, some of you listening today will also find it beneficial to to join us and to um, make uh, the, the... the solar agenda uh, become even more important across the continent. Thank you once again for uh, for joining us today. Thank you, Titus, for uh, all these uh, interesting updates uh, about uh, Jinko Solar products. And I look forward to having you all uh, join us again.